Hey, Jeep junkies. This week's XJ Talk Show has a ton of great stuff for your listening pleasure. We hear a touching feel-good Jeep story on This Week in Jeep. We spread the love around for some of our YouTube subscribers, and we introduce a new segment involving the one and only Nikki G. Some voicemails, a new Jeep archive is shared by Steve, and I interview Terry, a former line worker at the very plant our XJs were made. All that in a very special unveiling on the next XJ Talk Show. The XJ Talk Show is for entertainment purposes only. Any advice or information provided on this show should be verified by alternative sources prior to making any changes or modifications to your vehicle. We are not experts, just people that enjoy the Jeep hobby and don't mind talking endlessly about it. P.S. We love you. Welcome to the XJ Talk Show. You are listening to the Jeep Cherokee Premier Podcast. Now, here are your hosts, Tony and Josh. Take it away, boys. I want to talk so bad. First week in G. A runt returns home. Every now and again, I like to divert from the global perspectives and uh, from reporting who's recalling what and finding new ways to bash the 2014 Cherokee or the 2015 Renegade and share with you guys what I call a feel-good story. It was like watching a family reunion. I cried when I saw it, said Patty Heidel. She rushed to the spot where the Jeep was supposed to be, thanks to a caller who responded to the stolen Jeep ad with photo that the Heidels had put on Craigslist. Sure enough, the caller had it right. The stolen Jeep, a 1951 Willys M38, was exactly where he said he saw it. Joining Patty was JoLynn, her daughter-in-law, and a burly friend who tagged along for backup just in case. When you're dealing with a stolen vehicle, you never know when you might need some muscle. Patty explained this with a little bit of humor. To the outsider, a small tan military vehicle like this uh, may not look like much. Tires are worn, the vinyl top is covered with dust, and like many Jeeps, it's a workhorse, not a show pony. To the Heidels, however, losing the beloved Jeep that they had nicknamed Runt was like losing a close friend. After all, the Korean War era vehicle had been with the Heidels since 1975. That's the year Patty's husband, Gary, bought the Jeep in New Mexico and towed it to Spokane. He said, I thought it was a goner. Figured it was parked in somebody's hunting camp and would stay there forever. What a difference a day makes. Flashback to when thieves, or thief, crept up behind the Heidel's tidy home. The culprits went to work on the Jeep, using a bolt cutter to snap the padlock chain that Gary had ran through the steering wheel and under the driver's seat as a security precaution. It was something I did every time, the 76-year-old Vietnam vet said. Didn't matter. Chain cut. She, uh, the creeps punched out the ignition, crossed some wires, and took off into darkness. The next morning, Gary got the shock of his life when he walked outside and discovered a runt-sized void on his concrete slab. The vermin come out at night, Patty said. True. Going over the parked Jeep, Gary and Steve came to the same conclusion. No damage had been done other than to the ignition. Maybe it was ditched when they discovered that the runt was made for crawling up a mountain road and not hot-rotting down Riverside. The Heidels picked the name runt, Gary said, because it's small. We'll go anywhere. And everywhere. The Heidels uh, used runt for everything from family outings to sightseeing trips. It hauled them to and from fishing and hunting excursions. A serious bow hunter since 1985, Gary said driving runt back from the woods with an elk draped over the hood was a tradition. There's a good reason runt looks like a prop in a war movie. 62,000 M38 Jeeps were cranked out between 1950 and 1952 to meet the Korean War demand. Attesting to its military roots, the Jeep came with a manual explaining where to put explosives in case of enemy overrun. You're not going to find stuff like that in a sissy Prius. Finding with the, uh, fiddling with the ignition, Steve got the Jeep going. The small motor practically purred right to life. I put so much money, effort, and time into making it dependable, Gary said. Anything that, had, that broke, I had to fix it. I've always been my own wrench. He's always out tinkering with it, confirmed Patty, Gary's bride of over 56 years. He has tinkeritis. <laughs> Don't we all? There's a reason Gary knows what he's doing. Serving the United States Air Force uh, through the Vietnam War, he worked on jet engines and repaired downed aircraft. Here in Spokane, Washington, he put his mechanical talents to use by, uh, by running his own marine repair shop for 22 years. And now Runt will ride again. This is a family treasure, said Steve, who was visibly choked up over the reunion. Rightly so. A vehicle like this isn't sold. It's handed down. Well said, Gary, and congratulations on a happy ending to an otherwise sad situation. Folks, Jeeps are stolen every day. A member in my local Naxter chapter had, a chapter had his XJ stolen just last week. 
Let this be a heads up to you guys. All these security measures that we've talked about in the past might be a good idea to start implementing some of them now that the days are getting a little bit shorter. If you guys have a story like this or any story that you think uh, would be a good fit for This Week in Jeep, please uh, call it in or send an email to newstips at xjtalkshow.com. Wow, what a great story. You know, Josh, when you first started uh, started in on that story, I was thinking that it had something to do with uh, a Jeep that was stolen 30 years ago and somebody had uh, called in because, I mean, they called him because they saw it and there was this big reunion. And then it dawned on me, you're just talking about somebody something that got stolen and it just happened, uh, they happened to find it very quickly after that, which is, which is great. Uh, and it's amazing, too, how some people steal things they don't know what they're stealing. Yeah, exactly. I mean, it's a, it's a tragic story nonetheless, um, but it has a happy ending. So, uh, you know, despite chain and padlock, you know, other other measures could have been taken. I mean, there's not a whole lot you can disable on an on an old uh, on an old Jeep like that. But uh, but nonetheless, guys, uh, just take this as a, as a little bit of a warning to you. Um, it can happen whether your Jeep is uh, 13 years old or it's 73 years old. It's it's possible for that thing to go missing in the driveway in the middle of the night. Uh, we'll never uh, fully understand the criminal mind. Well, I don't know. Maybe some of us will. <laughs> XJTalk.com is where you go when you're not off-road. And now you can go to XJTalk.com when you're off-road too. Using your smartphone, install the Tap a Talk app, then search for XJTalk. Take XJ Talk with you wherever you go. Jury duty, dinner with your spouse's parents, even, well... <laughs> Anywhere you need your XJ Talk fix. I know you've heard us talk about Amazon on the podcast before, but if you heard about our new game, you bought what? It's a lot of fun, and we want you guys to play along. All you have to do is go to xjtalk.com or xjtalkshow.com and click on the Amazon banner there on the main page. This takes you right to Amazon, where you can buy any crazy little thingamajig to join in on the fun. Amazon gives us a list every week of what you guys are buying, but we don't get to know who it is that's buying it. As an added bonus, you get the same great price you always would, and Amazon is going to give the show a small pittance for you playing along. So let's all have some fun. The XJ Talk Show and Amazon.com. The XJ Talk Show is now available on iTunes. Subscribe and leave a review. Also, be sure to give us a five-star rating. Today's podcast is brought to you by Audible.com. Over 150,000 titles to choose from for your iPhone, Android, Kindle, your MP3 player. Get a free audiobook download and a 30-day free trial over at www.audibletrial.com slash xjtalkshow. A little YouTube love, Josh. I think we got like 622 subscribers now. Oh, at least. And I know that number is climbing every single day. Thanks to you listeners out there and you guys doing a great job of spreading the word, telling a friend and getting them to subscribe as well. A few extra numbers never hurts. We pick a few out of our list every week in no particular order and, uh, well, give them a little bit of love. First on our list tonight, Cullen Hickey. Boy, Hickey. Imagine going <laughs> through grade school and elementary school uh, uh, with a name like Hickey. Uh, especially when you show up with a Hickey. And yeah. uh, this one is Gus Mendirosis. That Madero, Madero's? Sure. Marcelo Suzuki is our number three spot. See, why do you get the motorcycle names? And then, <laughs> uh, well, I'm not going to complain about this one. Tony Rocket. Hey, there you go. That's a good one for you. <laughs> well, nonetheless, guys, if you want to get your name on the list, just head over to our YouTube channel and subscribe. That is youtube.com slash xjtalk. We got Damn. some voicemails to share with you guys uh, as well this week as we do every week. And one of our most loyal listeners uh, calls in just about every week without exception. His name's Nikki G, and uh, he never fails to entertain. Oh, and you need to stick around because we have a little, little special Nikki G action later in the show. But uh, for oh, now, yeah. Segment, folks. Yeah, but for now, let's uh, let's do this voicemail. Hey, this is Tony, and this is Josh from the XJ Talk Show. We want to thank you for calling our 24-7 voice line. Yes, we do. Just leave your first name and your question or comment. There's no guarantee, but we may play your message on the podcast. Oh, and don't worry about keeping it clean. We'll take care of that. Now it's your turn to speak at the beep. Hey, this is Nikki G. And uh, this week I want to give a compliment and uh, ding, 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 give a bitch. But, uh, I'll start off by saying that uh, on my way to Food Line yesterday, I 
past a woman on the side of the road, had a flat tire in an old beat up Chevy truck. And so I pulled over to offer assistance and I took the jack out of my Jeep and my tire iron and uh jacked up her jacked up her car, took her tire off. And uh I looked underneath her bumper, no spare. <laughs> so I asked her where her spare tire was. And she pointed to the front of her truck. <laughs> she was using her spare tire. Obviously, she had a flat previously and driving around on her spare tire. So uh, I took her and her tire just a few miles down the road to uh, Discount Tire in North Lake. And they fixed her flat for free. And uh, the kid that fixed it even drove her back to her truck and put it on for her. So I continue on my way to food line and buy my Chips Ahoy cookies that were two for four dollars. <laughs> and so my my compliment is way to go discount tire. I already get my tires from you guys, but you know you got my business anyhow. Good job. And uh, my bitch and gripe is to all these morons driving around without a spare tire. Come on, you're asking for trouble. It's ninety percent of the cars sold in America. Come with a tire. How do you lose your spare tire? And if you lose your spare tire, how in the heck do you find your car keys? It, it really bothers me when Jeep owners don't have a spare tire. I can see your, I can see your little rack on your Wranglers. If it's empty or not. If you got an XJ, I can see if it's in there. You know, I really want to get a pass at the Grand Cherokee, you guys. I don't know where in the heck you keep your tires. But uh, there's a Jeep owner. You should ha- carry a minimal amount of support equipment. If you open up your cargo area and you just fit a peanut in there, you left something behind. You should have lots of stuff in there. If I see somebody pulled on the side of the road with a flat tire, I'm going to stop. And if you got a spare, I'll gladly change your tire for you. But if you don't, I'm going to take your picture and I'm going to start a web blog of, called the Hall of Idiots. I'm going to put your picture on it. All right, guys, I, I feel a lot better now. And uh, I guess this counts as therapy, so uh, just send me a bill. <laughs> and I'll chat you later. Have a good one. Bye. Wow. It, S- serious Nikki G. You know what? When I when he uh, said he you know he got the tire iron out of his uh, out of his truck and he, and he went over to you know I, I was figuring okay now this is the point in time where you know uh, this woman sees Nikki G. Um, you know, coming at her with uh, with a tire iron in hand, uh, and this is where Nikki G gets maced on the side of the freeway. So you know I, that's the direction I thought this was going, but uh, but no, uh, very cool story, very cool story, guys. Um, I I can't tell you how many times a week that I pass the freeway, um, somebody's on the side of the road, and you know they got a flat tire or their hoods up or something like that, and I'm in the Honda, and you know I don't carry all the tools and and diagnostic equipment and all the other stuff that I usually have in the Jeep. Uh, in, in the Honda, of course. So, How you know, convenient. it's like, <laughs> you know, there's that part of me that's like, God, ah, geez, you know, I wish I could, I wish I could stop and help, but I, I can't, I'm not prepared uh, in that way that I normally am in the Jeep. So, uh, but if any time I am in the Jeep and I see something like that, I have same thing. If you guys got a story like that, we want to hear it, you know, give us a call, leave a message on our voicemail line like Nikki G did. Tell us a story when you, uh, you know, went ahead and did that good Samaritan thing. And help somebody, uh, sp- you know, jump a car or yeah, jump a car, jump a car over a bridge, uh, or, or, uh, you know, or just uh, just swap the tire out, or uh, help cut a uh, a chain on and uh, free a Willie's Jeep. Yeah, <laughs> it's <laughs> free. It's free. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's well, great. So- that's that's great. Uh, I really appreciate Nikki G uh, sharing that with us, and uh, uh, kudos and good on you to Discount Tire for taking over the uh, the job there for for Nikki G. Hey, something else that's free, guys, is iTunes. You guys can pop over there and find us over on iTunes. We highly encourage you guys to leave us a five-star review and leave a comment. Oftentimes, those comments, those uh, reviews, we uh, go ahead and read them on the air live during the show. And uh, so if you got something to say about the show, constructive criticism or, you know, just a a friendly, hey, how you doing? And thanks for putting the show together. Uh, We appreciate any kind of feedback, guys. We love it. Uh, positive or otherwise, uh, just go ahead, pop over to iTunes, leave us that review, three star, five star, whatever you want to leave, and make sure you post a comment. We'll get it on the show either way. 
Yes, yes. Hey, would you uh, you guys enjoyed the uh, the first uh, segment of Jeep Archive, of uh, Jeep Tips, Jeep Archive. Uh, we need to add like three more different type segment names in there, but uh, that Steve did uh, for us a uh, week before last. And here's part two. Uh, sit back, get a nice beverage, and enjoy. That's a that's an order, soldier. And now for a disclaimer: Jeep Tips is for entertainment purposes only. If you choose to follow these tips, man up and take the responsibility for your own actions. If you cannot or you feel that working on your Jeep is beyond your abilities, seek the help or advice of a trained certified mechanic. Got a tip? We do. It's time for Jeep Tips. Last time on Jeep Archives, we talked about the original Jeep, the World War II Jeep, the MB and the uh, GPW. And uh, now we're going to fast forward here to 1946 when the Willys Automobile Corporation decided that uh, this Jeep business had been so popular with the GIs in World War II that they would make a civilian version of the Jeep for uh, the general public. And so the uh, Jeep now has been trademarked in 1946 by Willys, and they uh, now are going to make several Jeep vehicles for people like you and me. And one of them was the CJ-2A, and uh, they also had a military version, the M38, and uh, now instead of calling it a GPW or GPV or whatever, um, they're going to start putting numbers on everything. So uh, the M38 Jeep was uh, tagged, and uh, every Jeep that was ever made after that had some sort of an M number on it, as well as any other vehicle uh, started out with an M, and uh, M was for military. But the CJ2A, uh, for the uh, general consumer, uh, took an interesting twist. Both uh, Dodge and uh, Willys had decided that uh, some of these vehicles that were made in World War II were going to be good for the civilian population. And the Dodge Power Wagon was offered, and the uh, CJ2A was also offered. And the unique thing about both of these vehicles was that they were marketed not only just for everyday people, but for farmers. And you could actually buy farm implements to put on both of them. And the CJ2A had all kinds of attachments you could get from the factory. Uh, you could get a plow if you wanted. There was a PTO winch, and there was two PTOs available for the CJ2A. They had upgraded the uh, transmission from a T84 to a T90. They'd uh, designated the Spicer, uh, same thing as Dana. It was Spicer Dana, and then now we know it is just Dana. But anyway, they had the Spicer 18 transfer case, and it had a little pan on the bottom of it that you could unbolt and put another PTO on that that ran off the intermediate gear. So you could run two PTOs off of your CJ2A, and you could even get things like a rotary snowplow that used a uh, Jeep four-cylinder, uh, 55 horse engine in it, and you could go out and and uh, blow snow out of your driveway or anything else. And it was just a real nice little compact little rig that uh, you could use to uh, shovel the driveway with. And uh, <clears throat> you could get sickle bar mowers and uh, uh, PTO winches and uh, uh, you could put your PTO out the front or you could put it out the back. Uh, there was even a uh, a welder that you could uh, put in the back. You'd shift your PTO in, and uh, it had a chain sprocket on the end of it. They would come up, and it would run the uh, generator for the welder, and you could take your welder out and fix your farm machinery. And that was kind of a cool thing. So uh, in order to do this now, they had to uh, upgrade the... Uh, 
Dana 25 rear end, because the Dana 25 rear end is not strong enough to do things like plowing and so forth. So there was two new rear ends that were available in the CJ2A and the M and the M38 only had one rear end, and that was the Dana 44. But the 2A had two of them. One was the Dana 44, had 10 spline axles. Uh, everything was 10 spline in those days. The input gear on the transmission was 10 spline. The output gear on the or spline on the transmission was 10 splines. Uh, the axle shafts were 10 splines. Everything was 10 splines because that's the way they did it. They had to, uh, took a long time to cut them one spline at a time in a, uh, horizontal milling machine, and that was just the manufacturing processes of the day. Nowadays, they roll splines and they do it all just really quick. Uh, they had a tapered end on the axle shaft, and uh, there was a key in it, and it, as long as that key and uh, taper were tight, uh, everything was pretty much okay. Uh, if that nut on the end uh, got loose, uh, that key could... Uh, get sloppy and uh, you might not go anywhere. So, uh, but it was typical of the day. The uh, two-piece axle shaft goes clear back to the Model T. And uh, that's just the way it was. The other rear end you could get was a honking thing. It was uh, a Dana 53 and it was physically as big as a Dana 60 is now. They were huge and the pumpkin looked like it took up the entire space between the leaf springs. Uh, I've only seen one, but uh, no accessories for them. They were just a big honking, heavy truck rear end you could get in these little CJs. And uh, they were for use on the farm. And you could uh, pull a ton of stuff with them. And in fact, uh, in the uh, 50s, uh, if you saw a Jeep commercial, they were doing things like uh, going in uh, 20 feet of water with a 30-foot snorkel on it, or they uh, were pulling railroad cars around with them and stuff like that to demonstrate how much power you could get out of one of those things if you had the transfer case shifted into low and everything. So, uh, you know, quite the unique thing for the civilian population. It was the first commercial light four-wheel drive that was available for the general population. Uh, there had been a couple of uh, specially built four-wheel drive trucks that went clear back, uh, I think 1917 was the first one, but they were kind of ungainly. Uh, there's just a very few of them ever made. The CJ2A was the first real production vehicle that just folks like us could go and buy right off of the showroom floor and accessorize the way you wanted. Uh, and by accessories, I'm talking about all these other implements, PTOs and so forth. Nine inch double anchor brakes didn't stop too fast. Uh, they uh, didn't have electric windshield wipers. Windshield wipers were still by Armstrong. And uh, so you go down the road and uh, you crank your windshield wiper if you have to shift gears you stop your wiper operation and you shift gears and then you go back to wiping the rain off of your windshield uh it didn't go too fast anyway so it wasn't a big issue they had gone from uh five or from uh, 488 gears in the differentials down to 538s which was standard in jeeps for a long time uh so uh, they didn't go too fast. 55 miles an hour was it on a good day. So, uh, you know, speed was never the issue. And in fact, the uh, military in those days uh, never moved much faster than about 35 miles an hour anyway. So uh, those 538 gears just sort of fit right in the program. They also uh, had one other addition that was new, and that was a tailgate. The MBs and GPWs didn't have a tailgate. It was just solid across the back. And in order to uh, be a little more utilitarian, uh, you could have the original two and a half foot pickup box in the back and uh, by dropping your tailgate. And uh, some of your accessories would go back there, like your welder or uh, your uh, 
engine for your uh, rotary plow would kind of hang out the back and so forth. And in fact, you could uh, get little extensions for these things and uh, make your bed a little bit longer if you wanted to. Uh, and uh, there was one other thing born at the time, very early on in, I'm not sure when the first uh, worn hubs were made, but the first freewheeling hubs appeared for the CJ2A. And uh, Warren Industries goes back that far, and they uh, made a name for themselves then, and uh, now we know it today as a premier winch manufacturer. The few hubs still being made, things like that, uh, they've sort of evolved as times have gone by. The freewheeling hubs were uh, kind of a good deal because when you only have about 55 horsepower, if you can save a couple of ponies by uh, not turning over your front end, you might get another mile and a half per hour down the road. So uh, they were popular. Just about everybody had a set of Warren hubs. There was also another type of hub that was invented called a dualmatic, but they were never real popular. And they had a couple of levers on them that you had to uh, turn individually to lock and unlock your hubs. But the Warren was the uh, it was the premier hub and it was the one that everybody bought and so another icon was born Warren Industries next time we'll talk about some of the other civilian Jeeps that were available to the public uh, and uh, so we'll catch you next time on Jeep Archives well, that's great information. Uh, I love hearing about that old stuff. Uh, you know, I'd seen Jeeps around, but I had never ever experienced one until I bought the uh, the 98 Cherokee that I own now. So I'm a real noob when it comes to Jeeps, Josh. Yeah, I didn't even know about the whole, you know, sickle, uh, sickle bar, uh, bar sickle mower attachment things. I, I, uh, I tried to get a picture up for Tony to, to throw into the slideshow there, um, but there was these farm jeeps basically with all these implementations attached to them i've, I've never seen a, a a farm cj2a like that with just you know every farm implementation you could possibly think of bolted onto it it's just crazy looking really cool stuff uh, out of our past and out of jeeps past thanks again steve well in <clears throat> pardon the biblical reference but uh since the jeep was used uh, in war uh, I'll uh, i'll mention where uh, it says in the bible about your uh, what was it your weapons or or your Swords will be beat beaten into plow, uh, plowshares, share plows, plowshares, share cropping. That's a whole other subject. But uh, I thought it was kind of interesting what you're saying there with the because uh, you're taking a, an instrument of war and it's being used for farming. Yeah, and and you got an eight foot one sticking out the side of a jeep. I mean, personally, <laughs> I think that's pretty damn cool. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it is. Well, especially if you're the one doing it manually, and uh, now you oh. have something that was probably next to nothing since the. Uh, uh, there was so many Jeeps. I don't know how many of them they uh, they made or how many of them made them back over here. But, uh, yeah, it's interesting hearing the, the history of the, the vehicles that we love. And uh, uh, we also hear on our uh, This Week in Jeep about how sad that history has turned with the, the 2014 Cherokee, Josh. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> the, the Jeep that shall remain nameless? No. <laughs> uh, I think we should just change the name and, and be happy. Indeed. Well, hey, speaking of Jeep history and stuff, uh, Tony had an interview uh, with uh, with somebody who uh, has got a little bit of Jeep history themselves. Uh, sat down and uh, spent about about seventeen minutes or so um, with uh, somebody who actually worked on uh, on the Jeep line from nineteen seventy eight to two thousand nine. His name's Terry, and uh, and he and Tony had a little chat, and it's really cool. You guys got to check it out. Hey guys, we're back for another interview tonight. We have uh, Terry. You know him as Toledo Jeeper from XJTalk.com, a, a recent member. Now, Terry's got an interesting story to tell us because he actually worked at Jeep from 1978 through 2009. And, uh, well, he's seen a lot of the Jeeps. He's worked on a lot of Jeeps. Terry, uh, welcome to the show. Thank you. How are you doing? Really good. Hey, now, I always like to get started with a little bit of background about who you are, where, where in the part of the country you are, and what kind of Jeep you have. Okay, well, I'm from Toledo, Ohio area, <laughs> and I just recently purchased a 2000 Jeep XJ, and uh, it's my first XJ since 19, uh, my last one was in 19, 
89 was the last XJ I had. I've been kind of a Wrangler guy. <laughs> well, but, we'll uh, forgive I, you for I, that. I sold, I sold my Wrangler and decided to get an XJ. Now, uh, so the, the 2000 that you had, uh, I'm sure that you're aware of the uh, the head issues, the head cracking issues with the 2000 and 2001 models. Yeah, I've heard about that. Um, I my, This one I got has 120,000 miles on it, and I have no problem with it so far. I've owned it for about a year. Um, I just put a new radiator and water pump in it to make sure it stays nice and cool. Right. right. So were there any, I don't know if there was any concerns or any information about that during the time that you were uh, working at Jeep. Was that uh, something that you guys knew about or, because uh, we have kind of have a theory around uh, the uh, XJTalk.com site that <clears throat> the best year was the, the, the last year before they went to the new heads, which was 99. And I was kind of curious what your feeling was about uh, the, the best Jeep Cherokee year. Actually, we've never, uh, on the assembly line, we never got into the technical stuff like that. Um, but I, I've heard the same thing as you have. And I, I really, I couldn't tell you anything about it from, as far as a factory standpoint. We never really heard much about it. Okay, well, that makes sense. It's kind of an inter- interesting thing. Uh, I, I guess that uh, there's a... Uh, different layers of uh, information needed to know, and uh, being on the line, you didn't need to know those, tor- those, those sort right. of things. That's, <laughs> I believe that's the way it was. Now, uh, now you actually worked on uh, multiple Jeeps, not just the uh, the Cherokee. Uh, what years of? Uh, well, first off, what years Cherokees did you uh, did you work on? Um, I worked uh, probably from eighty four to ninety two on the XJ. And then I went to the YJ and TJ for a while. And then I went back to the XJ in 1999 to 2001. Okay. I bet you it was, uh, I don't know how sad you were, but I, I certainly was sad when they stopped making them in 2001. Uh, you know, I just, I kind of wish they had kept making them and uh, they didn't make those liberties. Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. I, you know, Working there, you just didn't realize what an iconic vehicle it was going to turn into. I mean, because it was just, you were so used to seeing, we were building 600 a day. Well, actually more than that, 600 a shift. Two oh, shifts. my goodness. And it just, you don't realize what a what kind of an iconic vehicle it was going to turn out to be. 600 a shift. My goodness. Yeah. I wish I'd had two or three of those I could st- st- <laughs> yeah. stuffed away I someplace, I you know. I bought a barn full of them. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so now... Uh, you're retired, so I think it's it's a safe question to ask you. Um, what do you think about the new uh, Jeep Cherokee, the the 2014 and soon to be released 2015 Jeep Cherokee? Um, we I've, I've been actually thinking about buying one. Uh, so my wife doesn't like the look of them. <laughs> um, I haven't even driven one yet, but I I plan to be looking here next spring. Yeah, the yeah. here on the show we kind of uh, uh, raise hell about the the, the G- new Jeep Cherokee, not because it's a uh, not a good vehicle made by Jeep. It just has our name of our beloved vehicles on it, and to us, it's not a Cherokee. Yeah, I, I understand that. Yeah, and I kind of agree with you, but I'm you know, in another way, I'm kind of glad they brought the name back. Oh yeah, I was tickled pink whenever I, I I heard that they were bringing the name back, especially after uh, GM had come uh, brought the Camaro back, or, or at least a, a body style that was reminiscent of the old body styles, and then uh, uh, Dodge uh, Chrysler, whoever it was, uh, brought back the Charger, and it was maybe not reminiscent, but it had a a nice uh, late sixties muscle car feel to it, uh, updated of course. So I was hopeful. That whenever uh, Jeep came out with the, the the new Jeep Cherokee, it was going to be like the old Cherokee, at least in some way, but updated. And then what they came out with was this yuppie uh, SUV uh, turd. You know, uh, Jeep the Jeep Cherokee was a, a departure away from everything that was out on the road at the time, and that they were copied over and over again by other manufacturers. And and then what Jeep did is they came out and copied everybody else instead of setting a trend. 
And that's that's kind of what bothers me about it is that it wasn't it's not an iconic vehicle. At least I don't believe it will be. Yeah, I believe you're correct. And yeah, the the looks it it does look like a Honda SUV <laughs> to say the truth, or yeah. Honda crossover, yeah. and that's it's hard to get past that. Well, it's it's nice that they made it very off off road worthy. Uh, I mean, certainly it doesn't have much flex. Uh, from the uh, from the axles, but I'm sure there was a limited amount of things they could do uh, and still maintain gas mileage and uh, four wheel drive and off road capability and et cetera, et cetera. I'm just glad that they made uh, or you guys made uh, almost uh, three million of the Jeep Cherokees because that means uh, I should be able to have a Jeep Cherokee as long as I want to. Yeah, there's still some around. They're they're getting harder to find, but there's still some around. Yeah, they are. Now, uh, what what Wrangler did you have? It, was it a, a YJ, TJ, something else? Um, I've owned a CJ, a YJ, and my last one was a 2001 TJ. Mm-hmm. Uh, what um, uh, what had you? Why did why did you get rid of that? Was it just uh, getting too small for you, or? Uh? Well, that that's a problem. The the size limit on those is is, is terrible inside. Yeah. And uh, we was doing some camping, and I needed to buy a truck. So I, I sold my TJ, and uh, then a couple of years later, we got out of camping, and so I sold my truck and bought an XJ. <laughs> well, now you got something that you can go off road and go camping in because you can still yeah, uh, you can yeah. carry quite a bit of gear in that thing. Any plans? Yeah. Uh, I mean, I'm assuming it's in stock configuration now. So any plans on uh, any off road modifications? Oh, no, I just lifted it up. I just put a three-inch lift on it, and I'm getting my tires and wheels tomorrow. Oh, I love and, tires and wheel day. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so uh, I should, I'll have pictures on um, xjtalk.com probably by the weekend. Excellent. We love pictures, uh, especially when people are building Jeeps because we all get to either rekindle that memory of when we did it uh, or uh, what some other people spend money, which is uh, always, uh, which the wife always likes better, you know? <laughs> yeah, well, sure. <laughs> so uh, we really appreciate you uh, uh, taking the time to join our site, too, because uh, we uh, we love getting uh, anybody and everybody on there. All they have to do is uh, have a love or an interest in Jeeps. So uh-huh. uh, is there, I have to ask, is there anything interesting over that long time span that, uh, any interesting stories, any interesting things that you found out about the Cherokees or any of the Jeeps that you worked on that uh, maybe is not uh, general knowledge? Well, it, you know, it, I was, I have been trying to think of some stories the last couple of days and I just cannot think of anything. <laughs> um, <laughs> Oh wow, that's pretty damn boring, uh, uh, man. <laughs> well, there's some stories, but I don't think I should tell them. But <laughs> ah, but, but I'll tell you what. Um, the UAW takes a bad rap, and I worked with some of the best people I've ever met at Jeep. And you guys, you guys, I'm telling you, we built some good vehicles there. Yeah, uh, and thankfully, I mean, certainly the longevity of the the Cherokee certainly uh, uh, speaks to that. With the three hundred thousand uh, mile engines, the the two hundred twenty five thousand mile or better uh, AW four uh, transmissions, I had no idea uh, when I when I got the Cherokee that I was getting something that would last so damn long. Right. Yeah. Yeah. It's uh, it's unbelievable. They're just the engine's bulletproof. I wish that. They still made them. So uh, I'm sure it wasn't a big deal for you guys because it was uh, everything was on the line and you had all the tools that you needed there. But uh, I'll just ask anyway: Did it drive you insane to have metric and uh, standard uh, nuts and bolts on on the vehicle? <laughs> well, on the assembly line, everything is right there for you, so it it really didn't affect you. Yeah. I mean, every every air tool is already set up. Well, you'll get to live that uh, that fun. Well, I guess you already have doing the the lift. I already have. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's not that bad of a deal. Well, once you get used to it, but uh, uh, you know, of course, I, I started working on vehicles way back in the uh, uh, the uh, mid seventies, mid to late seventies. So uh, I, at that time, all I needed was uh, the SAE stuff. So uh, no, no, that's not the way it is anymore. So <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's. I just don't know why they did that, but that's the way it was. Yeah, one of the one of the mysteries. Well, Terry, yeah. thank. I want to really thank you for uh, joining us tonight and uh, doing this uh, uh, this quick interview. 
And uh, is there, I don't know, uh, certainly people can get in contact with you on XG Talk. Are you on, on any of the social media things? Oh, yeah, I'm on Facebook. As a matter of fact, I got a picture of my Wrangler on Facebook. And uh, I wish I still had it back. But <laughs> <laughs> I always tell uh, people when they say they're getting rid of their Jeep, I always tell them you're going to be sorry. Yeah. Yeah, I, you know, I I even shed a tear that day. I bet. So, uh, <laughs> what is your? How do, what do you go by on uh, Facebook? Uh, just Terry Hoff. Okay. My name. Okay. Uh, not on Twitter or. or uh, no, uh, I'm not on Twitter. I never really got into that. Yeah, no problem. I just want to uh, make sure people can uh, reach out there to you, and uh, uh, please feel free to uh, uh, follow us on uh, Facebook. Just uh, XG Talk. So. Okay. Terry, thanks a lot. We'll see you on the site. And, uh, wow, thanks for making such a, a great vehicle. Oh, and there's one other thing on YouTube. I found a good video of the XJ assembly line. It's called The History of the Jeep Parkway Complex. So I just thought I'd share that with you. Well, I'll see if I can find that. And uh, if I can, I'll throw it up into the uh, on the website, xjtalk.com. And, uh, I'm sorry, xjtalkshow.com. In okay. the uh, uh, in the uh, show notes, it's actually a, a video that they give to the employees on the last day of the complex being open. Wow, that's just that's just so sad. I wish they still made the damn thing. Yeah, and uh, I don't know if you ever been through Toledo and ever seen that assembly plant. It was huge. <laughs> oh, I bet. Yeah, it was a four and a, four and a half million um, square foot complex. How many uh, how many people did it employ at its peak? Oh, at one time I believe there was eighty five hundred. Oh my goodness! That, had, that was in the late eighties. That, that had to have been fun for lunch breaks. <laughs> yeah, it was <laughs> it was crazy around there. You parked in the street. <laughs> well, it was good to have a job. So, yeah. uh, how, how's Ohio doing these days? I know that uh, there's been a lot a lot of downturn of. Uh, uh, the economy for especially automobiles and stuff, but uh, yeah. it, how's Ohio doing as a whole? Actually, it has made a very big comeback with um, the economy doing very well here. Actually, the the Jeep plant is working seven days a week. Oh, that's right, that's right. Because yeah. we've been reporting on uh, how well Jeep has been doing. Uh, yeah. it, it, I often make comments to Josh that. Uh, no matter how how badly we've uh, uh, spewed hate uh, and discontent on the the Jeep Cherokees, uh, the new Jeep Cherokees, they continue to sell them. So they are selling. Them. I, I don't know how, but they are selling. Them. Well, obviously they they did their research and and uh, uh, they uh, looked at the market and talked to people and found out what they wanted, and they're building something that people want. And yeah, you know, yeah. and obviously to be successful, uh, that's what you want to do. You can't just. Uh, uh, build a vehicle that you like and hope other people like it. Uh, I mean, not if you want to be a success. So they're doing it the right way. Uh, yeah. I'll just go back to the same thing. I just wish they hadn't called it a Cherokee. You know, call it a <laughs> uh, a chicken squash. I don't care. It just don't call it a Cherokee. That's my baby. Yeah. yeah. Well, maybe maybe in a couple of years they'll change that front end a little bit. I hope <laughs> at least. I always think it's squinting at me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it, it's it's hard to get used to. Uh, and I didn't know for for quite a while that the headlights were were down low, and I don't know how 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 good an idea that was either. But uh, it is kind of cool how they've hidden the headlights. But yeah, then you look yeah. at those LEDs, those line of LEDs, and you you go, what's going on with that? You know, how are you going <laughs> to light up the street with that? So it's just uh it's just the conf- confusing vehicle. It's it's a big change and. And we don't like change. We fear change. We stab it with pointy sticks. <laughs> Have you driven one yet? No, no, I'm not. No. Actually, uh, we had uh, we had talked about on the show uh, about doing a uh, um, a Kickstarter project where we would uh, uh, put up on the on Kickstarter. I don't know if you're familiar with Kickstarter or not, but basically, you can put up your your idea for a product or or an idea. And get people to fund it for you. They just uh, they'll they'll oh, okay. you know spend they'll uh, pledge like fifty bucks or a thousand bucks or whatever you whatever you put on there, and for that money they get different things. So the idea was that we were going to put up a Kickstarter project to buy, and this is a, an old idea. So it was a twenty fourteen uh, Jeep Cherokee Trailhawk edition, and mm-hmm. we would buy that 
with you know whatever miles that was put on it by you know it would have it being built at the factory we'd put it on a, if we were able to get enough donations enough uh, uh pledges we would buy a brand new 2014 cherokee trailhawk edition put it on a trailer take it to a field and just beat the hell out of it <laughs> <laughs> and of course videotape it and uh maybe r- drive some uh, some xj uh xj's over the top of it and uh and and then we'd cut it up and we would uh, give those pieces of the uh the 2014 uh, Cherokee to these people that had donated stuff so they'd have a little memento of the uh of the Cherokee that we just beat the hell out of simply because we don't like it and i figured it would be uh it's tongue in cheek but i figured it would be pretty funny if we could actually do that especially the insanity of spending uh some $30,000 for a Trailhawk edition and putting no miles on it and just just totally uh, demolishing it. So, yeah. So uh, <laughs> we uh, we uh, we never got. Uh, I actually was looking for some people to do uh, some videos of the Trailhawk. You know, some nice uh, uh, high high def uh, video, which you can do from a, 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 a smartphone these days. And then I was going to put together the, the 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 Kickstarter project and figure, if nothing else, we'd get some notoriety for being idiots. <laughs> <laughs> idiots with a podcast that were willing to to buy a brand new vehicle and, and not even drive it just just tear it all to hell <laughs> well sounds like a plan yeah. yeah it may not be a good plan but damn it it's a plan <laughs> <laughs> all right terry well look i'm uh, i'm holding you longer than what i intended and i just want to say thank you very much for being here we'll look for you on uh, facebook what was the what was the name again on facebook terry hoff terry hoff well, Terry, A A S as in Sam. Oh, okay. Well, thanks very much, and uh, we'll uh, be seeing you on xjtalk.com. Great, thank you. I want to thank Terry again for for doing that interview. It was a lot of fun, and uh, well, uh, Josh, I, I I hesitate to mention this. Um, yeah, I, I was told this in confidence. Um, <laughs> we'll just say it was somebody on the line that this happened on in the Toledo plant. Uh, there's a, uh, there was a, a story. We'll say it that way. There was a story that a guy okay. named Joe lost a thumb on the line and oh, yeah, during, uh, you know, you, you get to goofing around, don't pay attention and, uh, uh, lost a thumb and, uh, they could not find it. And the, the thing they were working on at the time was a 95 Jeep Cherokee. Oh jeez! Now, so some somewhere out there, somewhere in the U.S., there there very well could be a '95 Jeep Cherokee with a thumb floating around it. Well, I mean, they couldn't find it. That's what they were working on. That's that's the vehicle that the thumb was lost in. And uh, oh, the, the the you know you had to ask. It was a uh, a two door. At least that's the way it was reported to me. It was a two door, and it was a four wheel drive. Okay, guys, so uh, all of you 95 two-door four-wheel drive XJ owners out there, um, time for a teardown. I, we got to find a thumb. I don't, <laughs> I don't have a color for you, uh, but uh, I, I somehow believe that there's going to be red splatter someplace. Uh, <laughs> but uh, so the next time, perhaps on a Halloween night, when you hear a rattling, it might be Joe's thumb. <laughs> anyway want to want to thank terry who didn't tell me that story i want to officially say he did not tell me that story he, he was not the individual that told me that in confidence okay josh you got that okay yeah no i got it i got it <laughs> <laughs> all right well uh now we've got a new segment here that i've been looking forward to and uh i uh well go ahead josh i can see you were getting ready to uh, jump on the the wagon there well, I was just going to say um, we uh, we have a new segment that we're going to share with you guys. Now, for those of you who are listening to the podcast, this uh, this isn't going to be um, a super splendor for you. So um, this is just a, a great incentive for you guys to hop over to YouTube or even better over to, to uh, the XJ Talk Show, XJ Talk Show dot com and uh, and watch the videos. You guys got to watch the videos. Join in on, on the live show because it's this kind of stuff that you're going to miss out on if you're not here for the live show. So um, we've got, uh, it's called From the Mind of Nikki G. 
and uh, it's going to be interesting. From the mind of Nikki G. has been from the mind of Nikki G. Uh, let me describe what's going on here. It was uh, Nikki G in the bathroom. Um, he was on the toilet. No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm, <laughs> I was going to say, I was going to interrupt you. He wasn't in the bathroom. <laughs> 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 no, there's a lot of, uh, of, of grunting and and uh, and obviously some hard work going on there. You guys, if you want to know what was going on, if you want to know what Nikki G was doing, you're going to have to watch the video. Yep, yep. Uh, XJ uh, Talk. <laughs> Sorry. YouTube.com uh, slash XJ Talk. So go over there and uh, have a look. And uh, yeah, I don't know, about uh, what, about uh, 50 minutes into the show, Josh? That's where, where they should look. <laughs> Something like that. But you should watch the whole thing, damn it! Don't just skip to the fifty minutes. I mean, if you skip to the fifty minutes, go back to go back to zero and get go all the way back and watch it again at fifty minutes. Good times for sure. Well, Tony, I've got some Jeep news for us, and uh, not the kind of uh, Jeep news that I normally report on with uh, this week in Jeep. No, this is some Jeep news uh, personally. Okay. Well, wait a second. Let me drive up, and uh, we can do that. I'm sorry, Josh. It looked like you were talking to somebody at the campfire as I was driving up. Uh, <laughs> one of one of my many split personalities. Is, uh, <laughs> I just I kind of I started to I started to steer back onto the the trail and, and go someplace else. Uh, perhaps look for those people with a pig. <laughs> I've been known to hug a tree, and I've been known to talk to them too. So no. <laughs> well, um, I've got an unveiling. Uh, for you guys, uh, an XJ Talk Show exclusive. I, I gave a little bit of a tease on the Facebook, uh, the, on the Facebook, on our Facebook account uh, this evening. And uh, well, without further ado, here it is. You guys might recognize this apparatus that I'm holding in my hand right here, right now. Another reason you guys have got to tune into the live show. This is a throttle body. And it uh, went through an amazing transformation this afternoon, uh, which I'm about to share with you guys right now. Actually got some machine time uh, for, uh, for this thing. And uh, uh, finally, it's been sitting on my desk for weeks and weeks and weeks. And, and big thanks uh, once again to Dean Murray, uh, who uh, ended up donating this, uh, this throttle body. I've been sitting on it for so awfully long. You guys probably thought that, well, this is a lost cause and Josh is never going to make that happen. Well... To you naysayers, I say, ha ha, I have finished it finally. I say and, nay. Uh, yes. <laughs> he who has the, the uh, last nay, nays. <laughs> uh, I, I chose 61 millimeters and, uh, and we're within just a few thousandths of an inch of, uh, of, that, um, of that figure. So um, I can't wait to, uh, to start swapping parts and, uh, and get this thing on. And it's, the, it's basically the last thing in my, in my, uh, uh, whole air and fuel system that uh, that hasn't been taken care of yet. Um, it's the one thing that's uh, you know doesn't quite have the flow as everything else does. Um, so 61 millimeter board throttle body uh, done and done. So now I just got to um, swap the parts, install it, and I'll give you guys a full review when I do. You know this is it's wonderful that you got this done. And if if Dean Murray had only lived to see this day, <laughs> 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 dying of old age. Yes, waiting yes, for yes. this to occur <laughs> <laughs> but i will say this you did beat me in, in with yours because i have still not installed my onboard air system yet <laughs> that's, that, that's true that's true yeah you got a, you're a little behind schedule as well so yeah guys i've uh, i've literally been sitting on this for months and months and months and uh it sat here at the house for on, on my workbench for a couple of months uh, and, uh, and then it sat, sat on my desk for probably a good couple of months as well. So yeah, it's been a while, but, uh, but I can't wait. This is, uh, this is very exciting. I was, uh, you guys can see in the video and I'll, I'll, I'll post this video up, uh, in various places, my own YouTube channel. Um, I'll probably try and see if I can't get it over on Facebook for you guys to check it out. The, uh, the high definition video is, is much better than what you guys saw during the live show. 
uh, which was just basically a webcam set up in front of my cell phone. So <laughs> that's uh, that's what we get for uh, the the low tech that we're oh, working hey, with. Oh, hey, you know that worked out really well, Josh. Uh, I, oh, didn't, I didn't I, realize. I had, I had to g- give you guys something, uh, to, you know, some visual representation there. So, uh, yeah, a lot of fun nonetheless. Uh, very exciting day in the in the world of throttle bodies. Uh, in my little world of Jeeps, as it were. So. Hey, hold that throttle body up again. Yeah, all right. There ain't much left. I know it kind of like looks that way. It's um, all whole. It's, it's all whole. <laughs> there, there was a, there was quite a bit that was taken off. I mean, it's uh, I think the stock bore is uh, is fifty five millimeters, uh, if I'm not mistaken, and uh, and so now you know this was I mean, and each millimeter is point zero three nine of an inch. Or thirty nine thousandths of an inch, roughly, and uh, and so when you when you go from fifty five to sixty one, um, well, you do the math because I was told there'd be no math. So. <laughs> well, you were lied to, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> repeatedly. <laughs> uh, so yeah, that's uh, yeah. There's a uh, yeah. There's uh, one more shot for you guys, um, and uh, and you can see it's very very nice finish. I'm gonna go ahead and take some Scotch Bright uh, to the inside. I still have some cleanup to do. It's still got a little bit of machining coolant um, that's on it. Um, and you know, there's a couple small itty bitty, tiny, um, little chips here and there, uh, that's, that's going to have to get cleaned up. But, uh, but all in all, I mean, very, very nice finish, uh, very, very smooth, uh, all the way through the bore, uh, and everything. And it, it turned out really, really good. So, uh, no complaints here. Now there, there's some people that say they, they occasionally will get a little bit of whistle from, uh, right. from the ports on the inside there. So I may end up having to pull this back off and do some filing on those edges just to kind of put a little bit of a chamfer or a little bit of round on them or something like that, just to kind of knock down that edge, uh, just in case. Now, if there's a little bit of a whistle, eh, I don't know. Maybe maybe that's something I can, uh, can grow to like. I don't, I don't know. We'll see. Well, as long as you don't get trouble for whistling at girls as you're driving down the road. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> Getting the right RPM just right. <clears throat> so uh well that's good that's really good now uh I'll, I'll tell a quick story and uh my uh my 92 year old mother was driving her mazda 3 2004 mazda 3 the other day and apparently she picked something up and damaged the inside of the radiator and was uh, driving it uh for for uh, quite a while uh, as the coolant was just uh guzzling if that's the right word out of it uh, uh-huh. out of the, the radiator and cooling system. Well, um, apparently she, she didn't check the temperature gauge. And whenever she came to the, uh, the exit, uh, near her house, uh, from the freeway, uh, it died on her. She immediately tried starting it, which it started and went about 20 feet before it died again. Oh, geez. So she tried starting it one more time and it started and she drove it to the house, which was about a mile, a mile away. And there's where it stayed until uh, the, uh, the Mazda dealership that she bought it from in uh, Clear Lake was called. And they sent out a tow truck to take it down to the dealership. Well, they promptly replaced the damaged radiator and then tried starting it. And it had a nice plume of white smoke coming out of the tailpipe. No. Along with some liquid <laughs> residue <laughs> dripping on the on the ground. So they determined that the engine was bad. Oh boy. And promptly told my mom, my ninety two year old mom, that it was going to cost nine thousand dollars to repair. Oh, hell no. So with some clarification, there was uh, three options, 9,000, 6,000, or about 3,500. And I think 3,500 was a used engine, like out of a junkyard, which I was surprised that would be an option for a dealership. Maybe they were just telling her that's something she could do someplace else. So, yeah, giving her the good, better, best option. Sure. So I was, uh, I, I was talking to my mom. She was upset. And I said, well, I, I don't understand. I mean, worst case is the head warped. Uh, you could have done some head damage. The head can be replaced. And she says, no, they said the head and the block were one piece. No. <laughs> and I said, that's not possible unless the engine was grown or printed from a 3D printer. Right. <laughs> and she goes, 
I don't know. That's what the service manager said. So I, I called the service manager back and forth, tried to get a hold of him. He finally called me back, yada, yada. And uh, he tells me the same thing. Oh, that rat bastard. That the head and the block are are one piece. And I said, what do you what do you mean? How do you how do you get the pistons in there if you don't take the head off? The only way you could do that is if you grow if you actually grew the engine. And he goes, you know, you see, even though I can't see him, you can just see because you've talked to people like this before. You can see uh-huh. them going, oh shit! There's somebody here that knows something about engines. I yeah. don't. <laughs> so <laughs> panic mode. And yeah. the, the truth is, oh, uh, I I don't know. Uh, and my mechanics, he's already gone for the day. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> but but wait a minute you're the guy that told my mom nine thousand dollars to put in a mazda factory engine a crate wow. engine so anyway a uh, friend friend of the family uh same guy that uh set up the gears on my uh, jeep cherokee the 456 is uh yada yada gave him a call I uh, hadn't, hadn't uh, really, other than just on Facebook, I really hadn't uh, interacted with him in a number of years since I've been doing all, all my own work on my Cherokee. And um, I, uh, I contacted him and said, hey, man, you still at the same place? Yeah. Told him the story. Said, uh, do you think uh, you could uh, have a look at my mom's uh, Mazda 3? And uh, he says, uh, how many miles on it? I said, 66,000. Uh, I'm thinking... Uh, junkyard motor and he's like oh man if it's only got 60 65 66 thousand miles on it we can fix that engine that would be it would be horrible to take go get a 120 uh 130 thousand mile engine and put it in this car that only has 66 thousand miles so anyway he estimated about fourteen hundred dollars <laughs> and, well, and that was sight unseen that was sight unseen so it was just an estimate so anyway, uh, fast forward a little bit. We're going a little long here, but I want to finish this up. Uh, <laughs> fast forward. Uh, she actually, he, he, he tore down the engine. He literally removed the engine from the vehicle. Wow. Yeah. So this, and, and started doing a rebuild on it. He, he checked everything before he was replacing things and he would have had to replace the bearings just since he had it out, check the rings. The rings were okay. Uh, took the head down to, uh, I, I think he did, uh, I think he took the head down to the machine shop or he just saw it himself. She had literally melted parts of the head that have a, like aluminum guides and stuff. It's a, a dual cam uh, overhead uh, uh, set up there. So he had to go find another head, found another head, took it to the machine shop, uh, got it all squared away. They're buttoning it, buttoning it, butting it, it buttoning, button, they're putting it back together yeah, okay, today. Porky. <laughs> <laughs> uh, they put it back together today and uh, or, or most of it anyway he said it would be ready uh tomorrow friday and uh the uh with the additional cost of the head the machine shop work uh etc etc oh new water pump uh new uh chain uh timing gear chain guides uh from mazda etc etc all the labor it's going to be about eighteen hundred dollars Still, I mean, a ha- coming in half of what you know you were getting from the <laughs> nine thousand dollars. I mean, even off off the junkyard swap, still half of a junkyard swap from the Steelership, uh, from this douche nozzle that was trying to rip your mom off. Wow, what a piece of work! So anyway, we'll see. I mean, you know, I, I haven't driven it. Uh, I don't know. I trust the guy. Uh, I trust him to work on my Jeep. I mean, I watched him like a hawk while he was doing it. But uh, after uh, after enough times, uh, I, I knew he uh, he knew what he was doing. He certainly did a good job setting up these uh, these gears on my on my Jeep. So uh, anyway, uh, we're going to be uh, uh, going to get that this weekend, taking it to my mom, and hopefully she will have. Uh, uh, another six, 60,000 miles in it, and I am going to berate and belittle her until she uh, monitors the gauges properly mm-hmm. <laughs> and remind her, this is what happens when you don't monitor the gauges. If the, if the car is acting up, stop driving it. Anyway. But, you know, 92. Still driving. Uh, still sharp as a tack. And uh, uh, she probably, that's probably what she drove over. Uh, <laughs> I still don't. I still don't know how that you run over something and damage the inside of your radiator, not the yeah. outside, the inside. 
I'm still kind of boggled over that. I, I thought you might have misspoken on on that, but uh, no, yeah, I, there I asked some... them. I asked them specifically about that because I think they had changed the belt recently, and I was thinking maybe they put it on too tight and the tilt the the belt came apart, and that's what damaged the radiator. You know, because it's one of the side mounted engines. Oh, I okay. I don't know the setup. I've never looked under the hood of the vehicle. So anyway, I asked them for the uh, the the radiator that was damaged. Because uh, I want to look at it myself and see the position of stuff and see if I can figure out where it is. Yeah. So, uh, let's see if I can get $9,000 out of them. <laughs> so, anyway, looking forward to uh, getting that back to my mom and uh, hopefully that will uh, will be all done with that. Yeah, way cool. Well, another uh, story with a happy ending here on the XJ Talk Show. Guys, I'm sure you have a story as well you'd like to share or you could share a recent wheeling trip, maybe a, maybe a trip out to your uh, local Jeep show or a cruise in that you've uh, been at recently, uh, maybe just uh, you know maybe what you've done to your Jeep recently. Well, in any case, we want to hear from you guys. Go ahead and give our 24/7 voicemail line a call. It's 530-675-4102. Hey Josh, we got another interview next week. I mean, no interviews for so long and then bam bam bam. <laughs> oh, coming at you guys with both barrels loaded up next week. Interview with to- with uh, not Toledo Jeeper. No, it's not going to be Toledo <laughs> Jeeper. We already did that one. <laughs> no, next week is going to be with Tammy, Jeep Mama. So, guys, uh, tune in for that. And uh, here's a little taste of what you'll hear next week. We didn't have any air tools, I guess is what you call them. Right. So he helped me do that. And then it came time to wiring the um, the lights to move to to move them and they just didn't fit and i'm like but it has to fit i read online you know you just have to pull this and that and it will fit so he's like no we're gonna have to resplice it i'm gonna go get some wires and i'm like no i'm telling you it's gonna work so while he was out running to get some um wires i was i just kept looking and looking and i figured it out all by myself and i hooked him up and when he got back i'm like ha see i told you so you yep. didn't need to do it. Let that um, be so a I, let that be a lesson to you. Yep. So, I, we, we, <laughs> so uh, yeah, let that be a lesson to you. Don't ask for help unless it's uh, unless the big guy's got to lift something for you, and then, then it's just do what you're told. <laughs> and don't go another minute listening to this podcast without heading over to Facebook and uh, and liking us over there. Uh, don't forget to follow us on Twitter at XJ Talk Show. Uh, we're on Stitcher Radio, TuneIn.com, iTunes as well. Guys, please, right now, head over to iTunes. Just go ahead and find that, find that five-star review and leave us a little comment. We'd love to hear from you there as well. Uh, don't forget the entire show archive available for your downloading pleasure. Absolutely 100% gratis. That means free for the rest of you guys who don't know what the heck I'm saying. Uh, over at XJTalkShow.com. Oh, and uh, apologies to John Prerunner 1982. We really did want to have your radio com segment, but I couldn't find it. I did some cleaning up, and this is something I don't like doing because I never can find anything. So we'll be in touch with John to get that latest radio com tech, and uh, hopefully we'll uh, find it or he'll send me another copy, and we'll have it for you next week. Yeah, guys, head over to Hidden Wounds XJ. Make sure you guys visit those and, uh, well, support their cause. They're doing some good stuff for uh, post-traumatic stress syndrome and uh, traumatic brain injury. They're trying to build a Cherokee to take around and raise awareness at uh, different off-road shows around the nation. Uh, if you can help support their cause, be greatly appreciated. Stickers, T-shirts, you name it. Hidden Wounds XJ. Go check them out. Oh, uh, speaking of uh, things to put on your Jeep, like stickers, uh, you guys remember Full Metal Badges, right? Well, oh, yeah. we had Different. an interview with them. They have this great little uh, uh, actual die cast metal badge that you can stick to the side of your Jeep. Well, you know what, Josh? I don't know if you caught it on Facebook, but uh, they are now actually, it was kind of funny. They said they are actually, the name should have been Full Metal Badge because all they had was one. Well, now they're asking the, the public, what's the next badge they should make? So they're actually Ooh. going to start making another badge, getting another badge made. So go over to Full Metal Badges on Facebook and let them know. They have a, they have like four badges to choose from. Let them know which one you'd like to see uh, made and, uh, you know, purchase. So it's uh, it's pretty cool. I still want to get one of those. I'm I'm looking forward. Hopefully they'll, they'll pick the one that I wanted uh, made and I can buy one of those. Uh, I'd love to see that. We'd love to see you guys right back here next week for the live broadcast every Thursday, 10 p.m. Central. We'll see you then. Have a great Jeep week.